Welcome back, everybody, to season three of Melanin Minds, uplifting Black women creatives in the comic book and manga space. Today, we have another awesome guest, um, and we're really going to be talking a bit about her Indiegogo as well, because I really wanted to get this out there so we can get some more supporters for it. All right, it's a really good story. Um, funny enough, this is my second guest from Florida, and I I didn't realize that at first, so that's interesting to me. But she's also been a writer for pretty much her entire life with a plethora of children's books, poetry books, a very interesting looking novel that I saw that I'm definitely interested in getting. And of course, comic books, which is what we're really here to talk about today. So welcome, Jamie, to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course. I right, looked at that. I was like, oh, snap. You're from. So, Ty, um, I don't, Black and Culture. I don't know if you know who that is. She is. I've seen her name. So, I probably, I think I am following. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are both. Oh, I'm going to have to message her and be like, let's, let's get together here. Because <laughs> you know, we're probably like right around the corner. Wow. I never see anybody that's that's here within like doing the creative things. Right. And I do believe she also has like a like a like a comic book or a blurred like, like yeah. club community down there as well. So you'd be able to like be a part of that. So that'd be awesome. I see. Okay. I'm gonna send her a message. But um of course we're here. This season is all about her cultural heritage and stuff like that. But we're also here because you're running an Indiegogo. For Alexis Weil, issue two, and for anyone who hasn't read it, issue one, I was going to give my, no, I'm going to let you talk about it. I have read it, but I'm going to let you talk about it, not me. Yes. <laughs> so okay. Let me know about the story. So Alexis Weil, it's a dystopian action adventure, uh, female-led, Black female-led, leave that in, with that. Um, she is a very powerful character that uh, along with other humans that are now called skins in this new world were taken from Earth when a Hell King came and basically uh, just stole everybody and brought them back to his realm. And now they are there sort of trying to survive uh, amongst uh, this crazy hellish hellscape uh, of a situation. So it's her and she has her team, Infinity X, um, and they just fight to protect the people. They're fighting monsters some demons uh uh yeah just all, all types of creatures and um some might come in a form that looks kind of human but maybe it's not and they don't really know what's going on with that <laughs> so a lot happens in the first book we kind of just get an intro um it does kick off 10 years into the change so you kind of pick up right into the action yeah. As someone who has read the book, I will say, yeah, you definitely get right into the action of what what is going on. And then she leaves us on this beautiful, almost cliffhanger. Um, and you're like, uh, hello, what's next? I need, so issue two is coming. So now we can figure out what the heck is happening. <laughs> issue two, we got uh, a lot that is happening and it's kind of uh, more world building, more uh, navigating, uh, who Alexis is within this world as well. So we kind of go on an adventure with her, um, kind of guiding the way and maybe leaving what what you know as her team. So it's, yeah, there's a, some hmm. new, new villains, uh, got new uh, areas within the realm because uh, they are within Azair for the first uh, book. And now they're trying to get, there might be some peaks at the outside world that is still within this. <laughs> about this though, is like the villains don't feel like villain of the week. They feel like this is a very big looming threat. I don't know what they're gonna do. Yeah. Because um, they look, especially knowing that some of them can be almost anybody. Yeah, you don't yeah. really know. And it's because Rhapsodus, he, uh, he is the ultimate evil, the ultimate baddie, like a, a devil. Um, 
or he could be the devil. We don't really say his name much, but um, he essentially can possess anybody. So that's his thing is he wants to get inside of you. And <laughs> so Alexis, she wears her, uh, her, oh my gosh, steel covering over her, her chest to kind of protect herself and her heart, which it has, uh, there's a, some, a few, few new tools that will be coming too to her and her future self within the second book. So we will we'll do our best. We will avoid spoilers. I will try. I know. I'm sorry. I'm like, that's why um, you can't ask me these things. Cause I just, can't. sorry, I'm sorry. I'm intrigued. I can't wait to, to tell more, oh. show more. I understand. I understand. It's okay. I understand. <laughs> but for anyone watching also know that if you back Alexis on Indigo at what is it? $20? Yes. $20 well, yeah. or you also get my book at Monty. And you will get Luna from yep. Carla as a part of your backing. So, I mean, you're getting a lot here. I There's mean, that'd be really great. No reason not to at least try it out. Yeah. You can pre order the second book and you'll get the two along with it or whatever amount that's above 20 that you want. Um, there's t shirts, there are posters, there's all different types of goodies that you can get along. But the two added books, that's really exciting. So, exactly. So, Mm -hmm. Essentially, what I'm saying is there's a link in the bio right now that you should click and go and back the Indiegogo, go uh -huh. and then you come back and watch the rest of the interview as we get into the, the cultural identity and heritage for Jane. So the first thing I want to ask you is, can you share anything about how your cultural heritage influences your work? Any specific examples from your cultural background that's given you any kind of inspiration or anything like that? Um, I'd say culturally, I just always want a, a strong woman to take the lead. Most of my writing is always female led. Even uh, most of my children's work is a little mm -hmm. girls taking the, the lead. Um, so I always want a girl, you want uh, representation, somebody that looks like me, somebody that looks like you within the, the story. And mm -hmm. I take from my mom and from my grandmother. So strong personalities that I come from, I put within the characters as well. So it's culturally, that's that's what it is. It's like, for me, it's family putting it, putting that in there. Yeah, I love that. And also like Seed looks really interesting. Yeah. And I'm very curious. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Seed is something that I'm uh, uh, I really, I love the, it's a novella and I, I love the story. The book is uh, essentially about women taking, uh, having, basically, okay, sorry, when I, when I, get, I get a little <laughs> excited, especially given, the, given the precedence of what, of what has happened today with uh, uh, Biden dropping Ooh. out. <laughs> potential for a female lead to, to, yeah. to take over, um, not take over, run, help. You know, I don't know. I don't want to scare the people. But so, <laughs> so the seed is essentially women that have had enough um, and kind of been beaten down to the point where they want are ready to take over the world um, in a positive manner. So it's, uh, again, female led, essentially, uh, Emerson Godden is a, a lawyer, black female, who's a uh, approached by like a dark entity in a way um yes yeah, another woman that's uh kind of brings her an idea of what she would invite her into um and she along with i believe a few other women so i want to give that away but there's a few other women involved um they're all invited to this meeting and be essentially told uh what they would be a part of and they're given the option. You can either be a part of it or just, you know, you go go your separate way, um, which that way might be going back to your life or it might be a cutoff of your life. <laughs> so <laughs> there, there is a lot going over there, but it's essentially women taking over the world and realizing what the power they, they have. No yeah. further questions, Your Honor. Yes, women in technology. And let's be fair. And ran the world, it'd run a lot better. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> there wouldn't be war. Definitely not. <laughs> so, how do you approach the 
balance between honoring like the tradition of the past and embracing the innovation of your creative process. Like I know you said like with Seed, there's definitely technology. Alexis Wilde takes place technically like in the future. Like how do you balance those things out? Um, I know within the story, there's always a like current world representation within the notion of creating a future world that was yeah. affected by it. So a lot of it is, um, I don't know, like, how do you, well, you know, it's not even, it's, you want to be innovative, but also see a world that you think could possibly happen. So it's, a lot of it, honestly, is dreaming up your future. So some of it's a scary notion of what could be, what could happen if uh, certain things aren't done. And another one is uh, what you would like it to be. So what you could see in the future. So I'd say even with the seed, that's a future that I would love to see women take more of a power structure and, and know our worth, know our power and what we can do in the world together. Because there's more women in the world than any, you know, men. But um, I wish they would realize that. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have that. And then we have Alexis Weil, which is um, apocalyptic. It is, you know, dystopian. It is what mm -hmm. could be, uh, if you think of Rhapsodus as this evil power that's taking over the world and the people now surviving, what you don't want to live in. We don't want to live in this dystopian world because her, that world is scary. And it's, you know, one where the little people have, always have to fight to stay alive. So we would rather, I'd, I'd rather the seed take place <laughs> in her reality. And, yeah, just, just hearing about it and knowing what Alexis Wilde is, I think I'd, I think I'd pick the seed. <laughs> well, we do let I'll the good guys stick around. I just hear women in charge and I'm sold. But how do you, you see your cultural background as a source of strength and inspiration for your storytelling? Um, as a source of strength, I'd say cultural. Hmm. I'm trying to think, I guess background would be never giving up and always surviving when you're looking at uh, your, your story and your character building. Like I always want, uh, I'm a person that I just don't give up uh, on what I'm doing, what I'm creating, what I'm writing. I always say eventually it will get done. So no matter what steps I have to take to get the project done, I will get it done eventually. And that's with all the characters, the seed, they don't give up, they come together to make things happen. And Alexis, she really, fights to continue on you know like I said they're 10 years into this change so this is a lot of time gone by to where they've had to adjust to this new world had to come together build things get to know different things but um did I answer the question I'm like culturally <laughs> how did that come together I mean culturally black women are they're taught to persevere and go on no I think this fits well yeah. okay yeah that is it. It's um, just always fight for what you want and not give in to what naysayers say, what uh, it, whether a, a man says something to you that doesn't jive right, you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. They think you can't get it done as well as they can do it better. So you always have to be ready to go. Yeah. I'd say. I appreciate the fact that most of the men in my life realize that they're the problem. Um <laughs> Right. What do you believe your work contributes to a broader representation of Black women in the arts? Um, I do think it contributes to it because it gives you something to uh, look up to, want to possibly be a part of, and also see yourself in. So um, you can, I feel like you can always relate to the character in some form because while Alexis is like, she's a tough, you know, kind of action figure, whatever, She's also a soft, she has a softer side. She's a romantic, she's poetic, she dreams, she has memories that affect her in the future. Um, and she takes other people into consideration, but she also can have a selfish side as well. 
um, you know, going forward. So it's always think you can contribute because it gives something that um, I think that women can get something from and be inspired by. And, um, you know, it gives you a little bit of, of hope, like, oh, since she, if she can handle it, she can get through these things. Maybe I can as well. She feels human. She feels real. Yeah, she is a, she's a human character, so. So how, how do you envision um, the future of culture expression among Black women creatives? Um, the future? I think it's just more explaining who, these are great questions, by the way, but <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> no, I, I think the future of cultural expression is really just showcasing more of who we are as people, um, because it's not always that we are showcased as we truly are. I feel um, from entertainment side, from even music to movies to television, you don't always get the vision of what uh, a black woman is, a, mm -hmm. a, a person of color is, whatever you want to say. They don't really, you know, show us the way we truly are. And it, there's many facets, many uh, different variations of, of the person. You know, we are smart we are ingenious, we come up with ideas, we are, we create things, we make things, we build, we have all different types of, of levels of who we are. And unfortunately, sometimes they just keep it very... One-dimensional. Yeah, like yeah. we're not, you know... We talked about that like... last season too, about how a lot of times Black women are kept either or kept one dimensional and stereotypical a lot of the time. Yes, that's the word. Yeah. It's so important for Black women to be in the room so that we can help flesh the character out and right. be multi dimensional. Realize that we are humans like everybody else. Right. We have different personalities, we have flaws, all these kinds of things. So it's right. not always that same thing. Right, exactly. And it is important for us to be in the room. And a lot of times we are locked out. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> we have to knock a bit harder and, and start to, as we are, we are as writers, carrying the stories ourselves and sharing that. Um, we just have to amplify the voice so that more people get the message. Time to break some doors down. Yes. Kick them. <laughs> so are there any projects or initiatives that you're involved in that help to preserve or celebrate cultural heritage through creativity? Um, really, I have, you know, Alexis is through creativity. I do have a poetry book that's going to be coming up as well that I feel is a little deeper and um, can have more of a voice just for me as it's from the heart, you know, just just myself, but, and I have more characters to introduce in the future with other projects that I'm going to be wrapping up and finishing. Um, so, <laughs> so more will be coming and it will, I feel, showcase characters that have more of the background of what the non-stereotypical Black family is, Black female mm -hmm. is, Black everything. So, um, because it's important. And I think those stories need to be told. And I like seeing us in uh, the fantasy stories. I like seeing us in the action stories and things that they try and uh, say we can't be. And you can. So, you know, part of their fantasy is us not existing. So they don't want us in there because then that ruins the fantasy for them. Right. It's true. We're here and they do be a vampire. We can be all of the things. All of the... If you can, if you can see a talking shark I'm dancing with a blue jay, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it's okay. I promise. I, what, exactly. What advice would you give Black women who are exploring their cultural heritage in their work? Um, what advice? Um, to just stick to what you know not be afraid to try new things and to kind of reach outside of what your norm is 
and do not, what's a good way I want to say, do not fold for anyone, even, uh, you know, uh, I would say, because me as an, a, a creator through the years, it's, we've had a lot of, you might get offers that seem too too good to resist, but you have to kind of ignore that and go your own path some ways, because it's not always worth it. Now is when I would do my uh, women in comics fact. I know who I want to talk about. So to <laughs> tonight's fact will be about Aletha Martinez who is an American comic book artist known for her work with Marvel on Iron Man and the Heroes web comic DC Batgirl. She has worked for Marvel, DC, Image, and Archie Comics and is an amazing artist. So if you've never seen her work somehow, uh, make sure you go and look up Aletha Martinez because she is awesome. And that was my Women in Comics fact for this episode. Luckily, I know people's names. Love it. Yeah, that is almost the last thing after that. Uh, of course, I want to invite people to do the season's creative challenge, which is to create a piece of art or something creative, whether it's a poem, a drawing, a photo or whatever, that really dives into your own cultural heritage, cultural background, something like that. And of course, it'll be showcased on the last episode of the season. Um, also, of course, Indiegogo, Alexis Wild, back it, support it. It's a really good story. It's a really unique and different story. And if you pledge at least $20 or anything above that, you get two free, two free digital books from both myself and Carla of Concrete Comics. So I, I say this is all a big win yeah. for you or anyone else that backs the project. So Jamie. If you could tell everyone where to find you and all your socials so they can find you and be able to support the project, please do. Yes. So on Instagram, I'm at AW Comic, on TikTok at Alexis Weil. And uh, you can go to AlexisWeil.com for more on Alexis. Uh, the books, uh, first books on Amazon and a few other outlets. Links are again on that website. Um, and the Indiegogo runs now through August 11th. So go on, get your book, pre order. Perks start at five. But again, if you reach the 20, you'll get the two added books. Yes, we love that. So right. go on. <laughs> Back it now or else. Go. I'm not even your friend anymore. But also, of course, remember, <laughs> you can find me at official underscore T-O-S-H-I-J. That's official underscore Tashi J on all platforms except for YouTube and Facebook, where I am Tashi J89. You can find Midnight Comics everywhere at Midnight X Comics, except for Facebook and YouTube, where we are just Midnight Comics. And of course, remember that a small spark can create a huge flame, which means you can make a difference doing the smallest of things. And I will see you on the next episode of Melanin Minds. Thank you for tuning in. Love it.